we're using we're using the uh, 3M VHB double sided tape, and uh, like I said, the the uh, the interior part um, of the bumper seal was not correct for a long wheelbase car. It it was just a little too long. There's there's way too much material. This is this is different uh, different type of seal on the inside. If you guys have ever done these, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, double sided tape, and um, this is half inch, and just uh, find the groove and get this little part right here on the groove and just feed it in all the way around and then put your bumper on. Here's what we're going to go in today, putting seats in. Had the uh, seat bottom on the driver's seat uh, redone and we had to order the material and the upholstery guy that started in January, I kid you not, uh, wanted me to replace the, uh, at least the cushion. So, had to get a cushion, had to get new material. The materials were to California. First time I went and got the seat, they had sewn the material in so that the diamond pattern, it's actually uh, long uh, going this way. Uh, it was cattywampus. It was going door to door instead of front to back, bumper to bumper. So, had to have the driver's uh, seat redone. But yeah, just doing some detailing and getting some hardware and pieces and steel wooling the chrome and trying to make that look as best we can. We're also uh, lubricating the tracks. 3M double-sided tape. Well, the seal for the bumper actually came with uh, double-sided tape, but it had been in packaging so long, it could have never ever have, uh, yeah, done the trick. So also the center section of the bumper uh, seal is too wide for a long wheelbase car. Now they said this was for a long wheelbase car, but the inner to inner from uh, seal to seal in that section right there, it is too long. So we're going to cut that down and we're going to put this on with double-sided tape one third at a time. So we started the carpet, um, putting some carpet in. I think I'm going to have to redo this right here. I don't like the way this comes up. I'm going to break that right there then that needs to be black from there on but uh the kit's not fitting bad i mean it's it's uh it's a good quality kit and uh they got all the backing and did all the stuff just like porsche did heritage does a good job on there on there this is like almost like factory matter of fact it's probably as good or better but uh yeah just fitting some pieces and putting in some carpet today Oh yeah, true story, funny story. Had to take the seat back because they had the uh, the material for the driver's side seat bottom that I had to have rebuilt. This is $800 worth. They had the, the diamond checkering going the wrong way. It's supposed to go with the car. They had it going door to door instead of bumper to bumper. Ah, that's good news. So yeah, these are turning out pretty good. Passenger seats already died. You know, not bad, not bad. Starting to uh, put some interior in. Still lining the front bumper and getting all the stuff on. Anyway, I wish you guys could see the interior going in. New headliner. Just trying to find what's here and order what I don't have. Okay, just a little update on the 79 living e uh doing brakes today uh actually it's been a couple days going to uh go ahead and get all the overspray and stuff the detail work and do a lot of you know brush clean shh, 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 you know make that all look nice and maybe a little semi-flat on the bits and pieces that are going to be exposed to weather um yeah so <laughs> got a little installation of the interior going uh ordered the kickboards both uh, behind the pedal assembly and the passenger's feet. It's coming along real nice, looking real good. Uh, pull the uh, AM, FM, AM, FM. And uh, went with a, another radio head. The only reason I had to do all that initially because we're not gonna, we're just gonna put a couple little four inch speakers here, but we've got to install the new dash and we have accessibility now, won't have accessibility later. Uh, rebuilding the brakes, 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 brakes. Um, got kits ordered. 
uh, for new seals and um, going to use the original rotors. Not going to, uh, not going to lie to you. Um, it's about the same cost as ordering new because you have to go drop them off and you have to pick them up. But um, I don't know about that. I'm, I'm thinking about drop them off, pick them up, the gas. I can get a new rotor delivered to my house from Ray Bestis for $38 or the friendly people at O'Reilly will resurface your rotor for 30 bucks. Gas to and from. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Okay, here's what we got going today. These are factory aluminum brake calipers. 911Es, 911Ss have these on them. These are the pistons that move in and out of the sleeve. So we got seal kits ordered. We're gonna put all new seals in, rebuild these, lock them down, put them back on. Along with that, we're replacing the wheel bearings in the hubs, the hub assemblies, and the hubs attached to the brake rotors. And we're taking those apart. So we're getting new wheel bearings, new brakes, brake pads, brake lines, soft line and hard line. And uh, she's gonna come out looking nice, boys. Yeah, that's the after. Dun, dun, dun. That's the before. A lot of work to do. Okay, overall pretty successful day. Got the dash installed. Everything glued down real nice. We used um, uh, weather strip adhesive to put the little edge down here. And then I think the, the, uh, the new seal for the windshield will probably grab that and be in that track right there. As a matter of fact, I'm sure a pinch molds right here on the track, but new seats are installed. Actually, seats are installed. Got our little speaker system working. Doesn't look factory, but hey, cheapest on evil, babe. But uh, it'll work, it'll fly. She's coming along. Okay, got the driver's side seat put in. I am missing the seat belt for the passenger side. Driver's side looks pretty good. Everything is original here and re-dyed with the exception of the, the seat bottom. The seat bottom was so bad that we had to have a new one made. We got new seat foam and uh, we just weren't able to use the seat bottom. But the passenger seat and uh, is completely original, just re-dyed and the seat back for the driver it is completely original, just redyed. So that came out pretty good. We're working on installing the dash right now. Uh, the dash is pretty much friction fit. Um, there are seven snaps or um, uh, seven clips. This dash came with five. And um, and then of course you have the, the screws on the back that, that snug and pull everything too. Um, it's it's not a bad dash, like I said. It's it's just it's the cheapest one. I think I got it off Evil Bay. It comes out of Latvia. Um, it's not a bad dash. I mean, it'll it'll work. Um, it's it's not obviously probably the most expensive one you could buy it like Pelican. Um, it does friction fit real good. It is tight. Um, we're using weather strip adhesive and and some shims and putting a little weight to to make sure that we're down before we get our window installed. We want to make sure all this was was um and i just made my own shims shim stock or whatever but this has been glued up for a couple hours and it's it tacked up real good and look i used disc brake pads before i actually had the the wood ones cut but anyway just went along there and glued it down and if i need to re-glue it i'll re-glue it but that's uh that's where we're at dash pad installed uh going to install the passenger seat next okay installed Little four inch speakers. Previous owner had a couple little four inch Pioneer speakers up here. Say we went the same way back, so we got just a little bit of stereo action happening in the dash. This dash, dash cap, or whatever you want to call it, uh, a repop or a recreation or an attempt to be a Porsche dash, was well, the cheapest one on the market. It came out of Latvia. We will have to do some trimming. Um, the goal here is just to basically, our, our, our dash was uh, pretty trashed. It had set out in the weather, and fortunately, um, where Porsches like to rust and and uh, this was, you know, we were really lucky, really fortunate here. But uh, we're going to get our try to get our dash cap in. Um, we need to install 
um, this is this is kind of different from the factory dash cover. You you've got to install the the speaker cover before you actually install the dash. So that's that's different. Nothing crazy fancy about the stereo or anything. Um, it is a removable face. It has Bluetooth. But like I said, most times when I'm driving these old cars, I use my my earbuds. So we're going to finish up with the carpeting. We're going to try to install our seats today. Uh, maybe put a call to the the uh, window installer and get our window installed once all the glass is installed. We can sand above this paint. Uh, what else are we going to do today? We're still waiting. Like I said, uh, getting all the uh, wheel bearings and and brakes and all that all tidied up up there. Um, and yeah, and then we start to tackle the motor. All right, here is what we got going today. We are still working on our brakes. Just cleaning up, test fitting some stuff. Um, had to order all new brake caliper kits, which comes with new seals, uh, the new rubber boot. Um, actually, the, um, the kit doesn't come with much, but you do have to have these inner seals. Looking at our pistons, hope that these clean up. Haven't really hit these with any, um, I was going to hit them with some 400 grit and maybe some steel wool, but, uh, just cleaning up the calipers, getting ready to install the kits in the calipers. Um, what else we got going today? Oh yeah. So we pulled the bearings out of our hubs and, uh, I'm not going to, I'm doing interior work today, so I'm not going to touch anything oily yet, but, um, those sounded like, you know, just gravel. <laughs> You know, they, they did not sound good. So we're going, we knocked our races out of our hubs and we're going to put um, all new bearings in our hub assemblies, our brake discs. Yeah, I took those to O'Reilly and O'Reilly said, our machine does not fit on the brake disc. So we, I did want to use those, but um, we have brand new discs coming. And uh, just like everything, uh, when you start to do brakes, you start snapping lines. So. These, uh, I went and ordered two of these. These were 66 bucks uh, for the pair. And that was the cheapest I could find, guys. But anyway, um, basically we're waiting on parts uh, so we can finish up all of our brakes and new wheel bearings and stuff. Finish up in our interior today. Um, hopefully I get you some video of us uh, installing the dash. Um, not gonna go back with the factor one cone. We're gonna go with these two little four inch stereo speakers. Do you think I use big enough cable? Yeah, that's... That's the uh, monster of monster cable. So typically this will get it done, but no, you know what? In this application, we're gonna use the uh, mega, mega, mega huge. I probably won't use that cable, but anyway, we're gonna go with the two little four inch speakers. Install those before we put our dash cap in. And uh, yeah, that's what we're up to today. I want you to get done installing your bearings if you wanna check your specs against what was original. You, you get you a fancy micrometer here, boys. Just index it using your thumb and index finger. Come back over and check your depth. Tell you what, she's spec. Repeat on that hub. Hey, it's getting late. Gonna get some more hardware tomorrow. That's where we're at today. I guess I can wash that up as I'm washing my hands and we'll install that tomorrow as well. Okay, new bearing, new race installed, and a fresh seal. Let's do the other side. That's probably a bad video, but that's that's the new seal. and The smaller one on this side. This is the one that actually faces outward. It's the smaller. So after we get done driving copious amounts of the red grease into the bearing, we're going to install a brand new seal. Is everything made in China these days? And then we know how to place it and we know the orientation because I always like to leave one assembled. We'll be gently massaging that on with a nice rubber mallet. I don't know how you guys were taught on this, but I use liberal amounts 
of the grease. And what I do, I can't hold the camera at the same time, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that bearing and I'm gonna try to feed as much of that grease into the cracks and crevices of that bearing, just going around and slopping it in there, just driving it on my hand there as I possibly can. So until it starts to come out this side. So I'm gonna run it into that grease and run it into the grease and run it into the grease so it starts to pour out grease on the opposite side. That's how I was taught. I, I call that pack and bearings. I, it's nice, it, it works. Okay, so next we got the uh, rear glass, rear glass seal, same drill here. Going to uh, wash this in hot soapy water, get off all the, doesn't appear to have as much chalky white stuff on it. Anyway, same drill, same method, same string, same preload. Um, hopefully we can get the, the trim on this. This trim wasn't damaged. Hopefully the trim will fit on that real, real good. The, um, the bearings and races came today. They are made in your favorite country and my favorite country. New seals, already installed one race. Gonna do the... Nice. I think she might need a little grease though, boys. Starting to get some of the brake parts in. There's long brake hoses, there's short brake hoses. I compared the ones that came off the front and these were the closest as far as the length was concerned. So we went with the short ones. Um, we'll talk about the soft lines on the front and we're just waiting for more parts. Meanwhile, we will start to get the seal on the front windshield. Okay, so we're gonna install the front window today. First thing I did, uh, our seal is a German seal. That doesn't necessarily mean it's factory Porsche, but it was made in Germany. Uh, Got the hot soapy water on it. Gave it a good scrub and got all that. I don't know what you want to call it. It's, um, it's a it's a powdery substance. It's um, uh, some people say, hey, you know, beyond washing and scrubbing, you also need to put, you know, like maybe just a little bit of WD-40 and just make this thing really, really slick. It makes it easier to work with. I don't know. I don't know. It's the first one I've ever done. I've got a German seal going in a German car, and it's the first time I've ever done this. So what can go wrong? I think I got these from Rensport. They sell on eBay. Probably, I don't know, might be able to go on their website directly and get a cheaper price, but they were a decent price. Real happy with the fit. Pretty nice. Okay, we did install our window. We installed it without the trim and a couple reasons. Our trim on this side is in pretty good shape. Uh, we are gonna try to take our time and get this aluminum back into shape where it will fit. Um, this is not the Porsche. And people say, oh, you, you should have used the Porsche seal. Uh, this is the Euro seal. It's actually a, bit, a little bit thicker, a little bit wider than the Porsche seal. Uh, some people like it better. Some people, you know, don't have an opinion. Um, if I have to buy the Porsche seal because this one doesn't fly, we'll do it. But what we want to try to do is get our uh, window rubber on and um, get our aluminum back into shape so we could actually get the little, um, you guys have done this before, you know how long this can take. Um, that little J hook right there has got to fit down in the, um, the track of the, uh, of the weather stripping. Uh, not only that, uh, it just, it's just not for aesthetics. It's just not to, to pick up and, and, uh, make, make the, uh, car kind of, you know, tie in with all the, uh, the other chrome and, and, uh, bright work on the car it performs a function it um it it gives the it gives the friction to the seal and it actually pushes back and it, it locks the window in um other things we're accomplishing today um we got our hub assemblies all done uh i did give these are aluminum but i did, did give a little bit of high heat aluminum ceramic paint just for some uh, corrosion and weathering that was going on uh, on these old hubs, I, I cleaned them, I uh, wire brushed them, um, tried to get them as nice as I could. Then I gave them a nice coat of um, uh, ceramic high heat VHT uh, paint. I think it's good up to 2000 degrees, but um, where they're supposed to be aluminum and where the aluminum shows, I just, I left that bare, but all new bearings, packed the bearings, all new races. Um, we're rebuilding our brake calipers, still waiting on some parts on that. And um, we're installing our boards, our, 
foot boards and pedal boards. We did not go with the factory wood ones. We went with the ABS plastic. And uh, the fit is real nice. I pulled these off of, uh, I think, Evil Bay. But um, here's ABS plastic. The fit's real nice. And uh, we're getting those installed today. Okay, so here's where we're at on the window installation. Um, not having any luck. I don't know if it's a, the Euro seal that we bought. I tried to contact the manufacturer. Of course, everybody says, oh, did you buy a Porsche seal? Did you buy a Porsche seal? Did you buy a Porsche seal? Well, um, the seals are German seals. Uh, this is a Euro seal. It is not a Porsche seal. Um, this is the rear glass, but trying to get the, you know, J hook in the, uh, the channel. That's the uh, J hook right there. And what you have to do, you have to separate and pull out and get the material rolled back right there and start fishing that in and run into the same problem on the rear as we are the front so yeah gonna have to source some expertise on that or maybe watch some youtube videos i don't know you know so we've got our brake lines installed or um got everything all cleaned up on the um uh the fender well areas and and um uh, d-bird and whatever you want to call it Got all the grime and grit and grease and stuff off. And hey, we finally got our install kits on the uh, the calibers. So rebuild kits come from a place called Automotive Brake Solutions. Give those guys a shout out. There's their number right there. I don't know anything about their kits. Um, they look pretty clean. Look like they have everything. Uh, we're gonna try. Try to rebuild our brake calipers. Okay, pretty successful day. Uh, our major problem today uh, was the old fittings and this motor has been rebuilt before um, and we're anticipating the worst. But honestly, the oil was really clean that we drained out of it. Um, no chunkies, no you know shiny things flowing free in the, uh, in the oil. Um, our big problem today was this fitting. Um, this fitting that comes over here to the dry sump, the oil bag, that line, that fitting, that's going to be replaced. Um, what had happened or occurred, a little grease on the car, that fitting between the, um, the oil bag and the, um, it's right here, it, it has a washer. It, it doesn't go aluminum to metal. Aluminum to metal is a bad combination because it, that, that, that metal is going to weld and it's going to rust over time. And that's what happened, that's, that's what occurred here. I'm pretty sure this bag here is metal. And when you don't have that, I'm assuming, because I've, I've taken a couple of these apart and I never fought that fight and you know destroyed, literally destroyed the fitting before the line would come free. So we're going to have a new oil line. And that was, that's just part of life when a car's been sitting 40 years, I suspect. Um, Anyway, what's the plan? Uh, we gotta get some organization here. So we're gonna buy some shelving tomorrow and uh, start documenting uh, everything that we're doing, taking off. I'm really not looking forward to the MFI. I would love to make it work. A purist would say, spend the money, make the MFI work, go to the great detail. Um, I'm thinking that that FBI, or excuse me, that MFI uh, needs to be boxed up. And I've got a set of Weber carbs and get a hold of the voice from PMO for some linkages and some intakes and get some breathers sourced and just say, thank you, MFI, you've done your job. We're gonna set you over here. Um, gotta find out what's wrong with the motor. Um, the, you know, we're gonna go through all the ignition stuff. I've already got a um, ignition box, a CDI box coming. You send yours in and I think to rebuild one, uh, remanufacture one with a five-year warranty is like four or $500. You gotta send yours in. Um, yeah, so that's it. We're going to, um, start taking things apart, um, making this thing lighter. I don't know how we're going to go back as far as exhaust. Decisions like that just haven't been made. You know, we're still, we're still in the, um, uh, we're still in the, how far do we want to go? What do we want to do? Um, 
Yeah. So reliability, reliability, reliability. I don't know if I'm going to um, do anything with those CVs, but hey, if I do it, you'll see it. I'll document it. Uh, the CV joints or CV axles. Um, you know, why you're in there, why you've gone to this much trouble, you might as well, you know, freshen everything up. Um, a lot of recommendations on the motor. Uh, a friend of mine definitely wants me to put those Carrera hydraulic chain tensioners on. Don't go back with the stock ones. Um, um, the motor is free, motor does turn over. Uh, we're thinking that this is an electrical issue, but since it's been sitting 40 years, I can only assume that that MFI pump is, uh, this Bosch pump is, even though it looks really nice. I mean, it's one of the cleanest parts in the car. And like I said, this car was supposedly running, uh, running when parked. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, but um, that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start with uh, the top end, box all that stuff up. It stays with the car, but I'm probably not gonna use it. I got a set of 40 millimeter Webers um, over there on the shelf, and we're gonna try to get this thing running, driving, and reliable. All right, what'd you do this Sunday? Drop a motor? All right, real quick, um, car's been sitting 40 years. Just trying to loosen up all the linkages today. Like I said, found the problem with the uh, drive belt. Going to blow out all the fuel lines, clean everything up. Um, but we've got to get all these linkages working and uh, butterflies are not opening. So what we're doing, we're using soda WD and we're using some carb cleaner. And we're just trying to uh, break up what little, it's kind of like calcification type stuff. And um, being real careful, may have to take this off and just, you know, give it the deep soak. I don't want to use muriatic acid or anything like that, special lights on the car. But uh, we've had luck with two of them. Uh, we're on the third one now. Uh, blowing out fuel lines, just basically just getting rid of some of the grime and grit. Okay, so we're back at it today. Just doing a lot of cleaning. A lot of prep work. Uh, we have all functioning throttle bodies now. We cleaned and uh, got all those with the adjustment screws. We uh, used uh, carbon choke cleaner, blew through those. Every every fuel line taken off, blew through all those. We've got clean fuel lines. We've got a function working. You know, we're no longer locked up. Everything is greased. Everything is functioning properly the way it's supposed to. The bushing down there that uh, is on the throttle linkage on the tranny has already been replaced. It looks like a brass bush instead of a nylon bush. And I don't know what was factor or what it came with, but that's where we're at there. Uh, real quick video here. I was not able to find a, a video on, hey, what happens when you've discovered that you've got an MFI car and your belt is broke? What, uh, what are you supposed to do? So when that happens or when that occurs, that, that's what we're saying is the reason why this car was eventually parked is because the, uh, the timing belt it is a timing belt, and we're gonna explain that here real quick. Um, read all the articles you can. Get get in the Haynes Manual. Um, do, do all the stuff, please don't take my word for it. I'm just going off the articles that I read uh, on the internet, whether it was the Pelican Forum, a um, lot, lot of good stuff there. But basically, here's what you got. We ran the valves on this car, or I should say, I, I ran the valves on all the intakes and replaced the gaskets already up top. So I ran it up on cylinder number one. Okay, so how do we know we're running top dead center cylinder number one, top dead center for cylinder number one. We watch the intake valve open, close, and then we watch the timing mark come around, which that's the actual timing mark back over here. I'll explain why it's over there in just a second. We watch it come to the top right here on the fan mark. There's a little mark for the fan. And we were top dead center on cylinder number one. Now, don't stop there. You've got to go another 360 degrees clockwise, turn it 360 degrees, get your crank rotated another 360 degrees and bring your timing mark back up. Now you're on top dead cylinder for cylinder, top dead center for cylinder number four. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the manual says you're at top dead center for cylinder number four, but wait, don't stop there. There's another timing mark and it's labeled FE right there and that's where your fuel injection all right so you know your motor is where it needs to be it's past top dead center uh, for number four not number one number four and it's on a special designated fe timing mark that's what that stands for for mfi cars okay so now i gotta get the pump time so on the pump there are real small timing marks 
and I was gonna show you this as well. Again, the only reason I'm doing this is because I couldn't find it on the internet. If it is on the internet, someone can alert us and put a link. Okay, you, everyone sees the, the mark in the, the brown casting piece right here, the flat one up top. All right, well, what we gotta do is we have to put the one that's on the cog right here, right there. Now the pump is timed with the engine. So now we're gonna get mechanical uh, pump or a squirt or a designated individual sequential squirt of gas from the pump into the correct cylinder at the correct time. We're timed here and the motor is timed as well. Okay, so when we go to put the belt on, is there any adjustment? Well, what they're saying in the articles, and I haven't done mine yet because my belt's on the way, these three Allen head screws, you are afforded, if you do take them loose, you are afforded a little bit of adjustment. So if you can't land it on the perfect tooth to get that lined up, say you're you're off a few degrees, you know, advanced or retarded back, there's supposed to be a little bit of adjustment, maybe possibly a key way. I've never done it, so maybe I should film it. But we know our pump is timed correctly. We know our motor is timed correctly, according to the articles I read. Again, don't do what I'm doing. Um, I may have it all whacked. So if I'm doing it wrong, please, someone comment. Okay, that's where we're at today. Just going to keep taking things off, removing um, as much oil and old gunk and road rash and stuff. Air-cooled cars, I, you know, they, they enjoy being cool. That's why I don't like a lot of oil and debris and stuff and I like to get all this stuff especially down underneath um haven't even started on that stuff yet replaced the gaskets up top ran the intake uh valves adjusted all the valves up top I think I'm gonna take it on this monster next get it all cleaned up maybe a little tss -tss. um definitely got gonna leave it um I think this is just raw magnesium here uh you can't really polish these they'll come back and they'll corrode back up but anyway it's a hot day all right Trying to get that baby back on the road. Okay, another week, Friday afternoon. <laughs> Got a lot of things done this week. Um, we did get our um, our CDI box shipped back from Bob Ashlock in California. Um, it was way too damaged to try and do the, the lower end. $330, so we ended up, you know, having to step up to the plate there and Pretty much rebuild the whole unit and uh, all new internals and um, modifications and upgrades and about a $500 new uh, CDI unit. Uh, rear calipers ordered new. All the brake lines are done this week. Uh, what else have we been able to do? Of course, install the thermal blanket. Go ahead and put our oil filter in. Doing some detailing around. Uh, getting all that stuff dialed in. Got the transmission off today. Um, going to be putting in the, the new seal here. Um, Looking at the uh, throw out bearing, making a little noise. I have to try to find a new one here. Um, I do have someone locally uh, who believes that they can rebuild pressure plate and throw out bearing. These are pretty rare. I don't know if you've priced these on the internet, but um, yeah, yeah. So going to take our electronics this, uh, this next week, going to uh, have our starter checked and um, the uh, alternator. Going to get done as well. Pulled the flywheel, installing new pilot bearing. There's the old pilot bearing. So getting that done. Uh, what else? Clutch, pressure plate, throw out bearing. Um, got our timing belt all done for the um, uh, drive pump on the MFI, the fuel injection. Got all new plugs installed today, gapped. Um, gosh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Been a pretty productive week. Uh, these are really a lot of fun to take off. Um, the throwout bearing actually has ears or tabs, and uh, it's real simple. It, it sounds hard or difficult, but they do have these little observation windows in the back of the tranny, and you can, you can see basically the, um, the ears or the wings or the flaps of this throwout bearing. They need to be rotated, fellas, 90 degrees in order for the transmission to pull back and come out for you. Uh, but yeah, just... Trying to put all new gaskets on, find out what and if in any leaks or hoses or anything that needs to be replaced, seals, things of that nature. Um, going to do uh, fluids on the tranny, uh, go through it, kind of decrease reset. Uh, definitely going to put, you can tell that the, uh, the uh, crank seal has been leaking, but so has. This is actually pretty dry in here, so this is, this is concerning. So we want to make sure we replace our crank seal. Not a big deal, 15, 20 bucks. We'll get a new 
crank seal installed. We got all this cleaned up and hopefully this wetness, you don't want that in your clutch pack for sure. But yeah, that's been a pretty good week. Okay, just an update. Um, sitting here, um, don't know if you guys don't know what I've told you so far, but we're still trying to replace this oil line. Okay, we've ordered two of them, guys. And the fitting that comes in uh, for the for the engine side is fine. It's the fitting for the oil reservoir, which what the book is saying is that 65 to 71, they were all supposed to be the same. So it wasn't like a mid-year change. It's that fitting um, on the oil reservoir that we're having a problem with. Um, alternator, uh, which actually on this model is a generator, uh, is being sent out for rebuild. Um, having all the pieces and components. Some of the stuff, for example, um, Porsche on the factory ones, you know, um, they did a lot of epoxy uh, on the solder points and um, wanted to look at conditions of wires and things like that. So we just went ahead and rebuilt the whole thing. We are gonna try a different stator. That stator is supposed to bump us up to 85, uh, 90 amps instead of the 55 amp uh, that they came with. Um, what else going on with the motor? All new plugs installed. Um, we did, you know, and we'll do we'll do a final check or run through to make sure one more time just insurance on our insurance that we were on um, top dead center number four cylinder and then we um, make sure our timing marks were correct we'll do that one more time as well uh, what happened when we um, took off the heat exchanger uh, the heat exchanger is very important on an MFI car for it to run properly well Noticing already that um, we had some problems and we had some issues. We had some rust, especially on the top side. And there was no way that this was going to weld up. MFI heat exchanger has uh, this preheat tube. It comes off, just functions basically like your heat, but you're always drawing or getting a measurement to the, um, the thermal control inside of the MFI that uh, measures your fuel. And it's, it's, it's a spring calibration. I'm assuming, um, and as the hot air gets in there, it changes the fuel mixture. But this heat exchanger, it's seen its better days. Um, you couldn't weld on it, that's what you get. Uh, and also, it, uh, it did come into contact with, uh, you know, something that it shouldn't have. So we got a new heat exchanger coming, and uh, I'm pretty proud of those. That's about 900 bucks right there. Uh, painting the snorkel, painting the breather, getting the breather all cleaned up. Remember that an MFI car will have uh, the cold start fuel rails that kind of mist or fog the uh, velocity stacks when you're starting cold. Um, that's the throw out bearing. I didn't think it sounded too bad as the hay tractor is passing by behind there. Uh, pressure plate. Um, and throw out bearing we are going to use, but we are going to put in a new clutch disc. I didn't like how the clutch disc looked that much. The friction, it doesn't look probably all that bad in this video, but we're going to go ahead and replace this. Some of these, it, there was no hot spots or hot spots, uh, hard spots or hot spots on either of the contact surfaces. Um, that was all pretty good. Uh, but here's the fitting we're talking about. And there's the part number. And this is the second hose that's come in. And you tighten this hose up on the reservoir and that fitting just never, ever, it's, yeah, it just tightens up. So we'll be sending that back. Um, and it wasn't a mid-year change. So uh, what are we doing today? What we did today? Uh, we're finishing our brakes. We got our brake calipers installed. Uh, we're pulling out the old brake fluid and um, bleeding brakes and using the the power and the magic of the old gun here to bleed brakes. So we're starting in the back for this uh, brake caliper away from the master cylinder and just kind of working our way around. And we'll do this side, we'll do this side, we'll do the back side twice. We'll keep pulling, we'll go around probably two or three times um, getting that out. Transmission cleaned up real nice. We bench tested the starter. Um, we got our new fuel canister in, uh, fuel filter canister. Um, yeah, so we're ready to go back together if we can just get that oil line and uh, we're waiting on it and we're waiting on the um, um, The heat exchanger and we're ready to go back together. So we'll finish up brakes today and um, Call the people and try to get some returns. Maybe get some parts. that will fit. You never know 
All right, little trick putting your uh, your string in. Let's get your smallest wrench in your toolbox and get it down there in the channel and just start feeding it around. As far as installing the, the trim piece here, there's a lot of videos on YouTube and I've watched a lot of them, but it wasn't until I got on a, I think it might've been a forum, you know, like Pelican or someplace and somebody discussed, um, hey, you know what, just trust me, get as much soapy detergent. It's gonna be a hard cleanup and you're gonna have bubbles coming, but the guy said, detergent, dish detergent. Get as much dish detergent down here in the track as you can, and then just go to town. Uh, obviously, everybody recommends make sure the frame, which this locks it in, fellas. You can try to install and put the windshield in without this. You're not getting it on, and your windshield's not gonna fit. I'm just, heads up. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, even with, a piece of trim that a lot of people would say, ah, I'd buy a new piece of trim. Uh, we did a little repair, we did a little miscegenation here, and um, even with a piece of trim that wasn't exactly straight, we worked it back into shape. Um, you can either use the windshield or you can use the car. You can just come over and bring your trim, your trim piece, you can put it in the track and you can just shape it and shape it and shape it and uh, save you a lot of time because you'll work your thumbs to death trying to get it down there in that little J hook. And this is what we're talking about. That's the J hook, right? Right there that you've got to get it to fit down in. You gotta get that little J right there. You gotta get it slipping and down in that track down in there. And it sounds easy, it really does. But the um, maybe the Porsche uh, rubber is, I don't know. Maybe it's better, maybe it's easier to work with. I'm pretty sure that this was Euro. I don't know what the, the back seal was, but this was a, a Euro piece, so we're 50% of the way in there, and then we'll insert the string. We'll get the string down in here in this track, and then we'll set it, and then we'll work as a partnership and just go around and go around. Sorry, don't have a tripod, can't film it for you. There's a lot of good videos on YouTube, and uh, uh, give yourself about, uh, yeah, about four hours to do both of them. Okay, little 9-11 update here, working on a Sunday. Um, thumbs are broken. Finally figured out how to get the, um, and I'm not saying I used the Porsche trim. I tell you the truth, that could have been Euro, that could have been, you know, some German off brand, but I don't think any of our packages included an official, you know, piece of rubber for that rear trim that said Porsche on it. So that's probably half the problem. Um, the other problem is, is um, when they tell you to use this stuff here, get you some detergent. Get you some detergent and just lather and slather everything. Because the problem that we were having um, was getting the trim piece to go down and want to go down in its track. And you do that before you ever put it on the car. Yeah. They're not kidding. There's no way you're going to be able to. The frame is part of the way uh, mechanically that uh, the glass gets locked in. And um, then what we do? Well, we installed the string. And you have one person... There's another track in here and you install the string all the way around 360 degrees. And what you're gonna do is gently lightly press and follow your partner and move around. Now, sounding pretty cocky because we got one installed. I still haven't done the front window. So the windshield, you know, if you do one, maybe, I don't know, I, I don't know. Maybe I can accomplish or do two of them. But, um, all right, got the oil line, um, waiting on the um, alternator, doing a little mod, doing a little upgrade, doing a little, um, extra um, amperage um, to the alternator. That's supposed to be done this week. Um, I'll let you know and give you the specs on that. Uh, let's see, what else we got going? Uh, ready to go back in? Uh, yes, we finally did get an oil line. That will, um, there's our new exhaust, $900 for that. Um, we finally got an ex oil line that will actually tighten up on our oil reserve tank. So, Pretty happy about that. So what do we have left to do? Um, install the exhaust, get the new clutch and tranny all bolted back up, go back in the car, fuel lines, fuel pump this week. And um, yeah, you know, test fire. You know, we gotta get some batteries. Forgot about that. Gotta have a plan going in to, you know, get the, get the batteries all going. Um, but could you open the, 
back in for us. Got the detailing all done back in here. Starting to look like a car. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna keep the solenoid on the uh, fuel manifold, uh, fuel console as some people refer to it on the interwebs. Um, some people just plug that and say, forget about it. I had to have mine repaired on the spray and pray system. So that little five millimeter fuel line that goes into these fuel rails inside the metal breather on a MFI car. This one was fine. Um, when I tested this, this did not test well. So we had to do this, had to have this re-welded up. So it was braised brass. So we got that fixed. I'm gonna start with it. I may, you know, delete it, but uh, at least it's factory and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, Labor Day Monday. So just thought we put the hood on, waiting on fuel lines. Got five millimeter, seven millimeter fuel hose, actually. Go to run the hoses uh, before the engine's in there, but I figure we might as well tidy up under here and um, clean our, our, uh, our lights, um, get new bulbs in, install those, install the, um, the latch, it's not tightened, and uh, gonna try to put this on without scratching the car. So I got some stuff we can throw over the fenders and uh, make sure our bolts are all real clean and go ahead and run them down into the, um, uh, into the threads that are probably clogged with paint since this was a respray. All right, Labor Day Monday, let's throw a hood on that beautiful car. All right, sorry I can't fill up all this and do the work at the same time. We're gonna put the clutch alignment tool away. Gonna to take these to 14 to 18 pounds on the uh, pressure plate. Then we'll meet the transmission. Remember, 7071, real fun. You know, these are pull clutches on 7071. So what you have to do, you have to get that alignment fork, which would normally be your clutch fork. there and guys it's got a slide behind the throw out bearing it's got a it's got a lock in behind all right 7071 clutches were not push clutches they were pull clutches but Porsche engineering was really good at providing you these nice little windows right here for you to be able to do that so 14 to 18 pounds let's just go 15 pounds on torque and clutch all right got the seal on use the uh the magic tool here just want to go down slow, steady, uh, flat surface. How far do you take them down? I'm in agreement with a couple guys that I watched this morning on YouTube. Um, the other seal wasn't quite flush. It was, I filmed it for you. It was coming out um, probably, it wasn't quite an eighth of an inch, but um, wanted to try to go flush all the way around. So like putting on VW seals, how I did it with the, the block, I uh, made sure I gave it plenty of molly with a graphite. I gave it plenty of molly, not only on the on the, on the lip, but um, I cleaned the surface and then cleaned the crank. And um, I measured down in there. I measured the depth. I didn't want to, uh, you know, crush the seal as I was tapping it on. It had plenty of room to go flush. Um, and that may have been why the other one was leaking. I don't know. Uh, but the other one was definitely leaking and we don't want that to get in here on our clutch package. So um, just a little extra here and um, uh, replace the rear main with a high quality rear main. I don't know. So I didn't recognize the name of the, uh... I don't know if I can grab that or not. Because of the color, I thought it was an Erling but I do not recognize the name of the maker of the manufacturer. It was a little bit brittle coming out. I don't know how long ago the rebuild was. Um, this is still nice and pliable. I don't think the spring is very fresh. I mean, the spring isn't real, the spring is kind of weak, but surprisingly, that's pretty soft. This one is a lot tighter, a lot harder. Hasn't gone through a million heating cycles. So we're gonna try this one. Um, yeah, made in Spain. So what could go wrong? Okay, just an update. Gonna put everything back together. Gonna to put a new rear main in. And I'm sure that's gonna be a challenge. 
put it in equally. I did not buy the, uh, you know, 70, 80, $100 tool. Uh, I'm actually gonna do it a little DIY style, a uh, couple videos <clears throat> on YouTube. So we'll see how that goes. May have to do it twice. Uh, makers, manufacturers, did a good job. Dansk, been getting some good pieces of parts, the new exhaust manifold, heat exchanger uh, for MFI cars. They sell them. Shipping wasn't bad at all. To get it here, you need it. Um, mine was toast, as we shared in a previous video. It was um, slightly damaged. There was no way I was ever gonna get all that fixed. And then even when I attempted to weld on it, it just started popping and cracking and doing all that stuff. So that's factory equipment and I'll keep it with the car. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at. We're gonna go ahead and put the clutch clutch assembly on new clutch and, and uh, pressure plate throw out bearing. Um, already got the, um, the pilot bearing. Gotta pull that flywheel back off. Bummer. And uh, gonna work on that rear seal today. Yeah. Okay, up under the car here. Working in the fuel pump area. So what we did was just um, blew the lines out and once return, we're gonna call this one supply right now by looking at the diagram. I think I'm, I think I'm accurate, but we blew both lines out, cleaned them, cleared them, and then we correlated and made sure we were um, same thing on the back end, back by the fuel console. One of them is uh, supply, one of them is return. That's air conditioning. We're gonna, if we do get the air working back on this car, we're gonna replace all the lines. I just haven't cleared all the, I'm gonna leave the brackets, I'm gonna leave the factory brackets. Um, but um, we're gonna use, I hope, be able to use the factory connector, not cut it off, just come in and, you know, do the little, with the Walmart connectors. And then these are the kind of thing you just, you know, put a little heat on it and they kind of, shrink up uh and our bracket when our mounting in our these are soft these are nice here so that'll work our fuel pump will bolt right there but that's work we were doing today but we have to stop because our fuel line was six millimeter not seven millimeter and i think the i think the uh, diameter on this is supposed to be seven but i tell you what guys I, you know i'm looking at these and these are these are closer to eight so i'm going to mic these and um you know, I know it has to be tight going on and, you know, then you put your clamp and everything, but I'm going to mic these one more time. The book called for seven millimeter, um, but I, I'm, I'm thinking these are closer to eight. I don't know if S's and E's had eight millimeter fuel lines, but, uh, you know, the five fit fine on the spray and pray system, but uh, yeah, these are a little, little big. All right, so we're going to start running fuel lines. Um, I've been told on the fuel line diagram, the one that actually came from Porsche, the one that actually came from their factory workshop manuals is wrong and you're not supposed to follow it. So on this fuel console, you have, uh, you have two supply lines coming in from the tank. One is actually return, I correct myself. After it goes to the fuel console, this is directly the, uh, the, the filtered main supply that goes to the pump. The pump has two barbs on it. And we still have three barbs up top here. Plus, we've got the, uh, I don't know if you guys can see up here. We've got the cold start injector, the spray and pray, which is five millimeter. All this other stuff is seven millimeter. So we're gonna start running our fuel lines. Um, that's next. Um, we're not gonna use that factory Porsche pump. We're gonna uh, probably do the, um, uh, I forgot the name of the pump, starts with the P. Apologize about that. This little guy here, um, had to do it twice. Um, if, if, if that, I, I pulled everything off, pulled the clutch off, checked the clutch, make sure the clutch spline was correct for the tranny. Everything's good. Um, I would just must've been off just a millimeter. Um, now remember on these um, throw out bearings, this throw out bearing does not push. This throw out bearing pulls. So you have to line up the, the, the clutch fork, which is going to pull. Yes, not push, it's going to so you want to make sure your um, uh, your turn or you know you clock in so your clutch fork can actually clear as you're putting the transaxle transmission on and uh, yeah so after I pull it off check the splines on the clutch they're good held the alignment tool on there real good before I <coughs> torqued up the um, uh, pressure plate to 16 pounds today 16 foot-pounds on the uh, pressure plate. Um, 
I knew I was on the money. I knew my splines were right for my clutch. I knew everything was good. She went right on. So I must not have been lined up as good as I thought I was yesterday. Um, but remember, after you install, you've got to uh, take your um, throw out bearing and you've got to lock it in. So your clutch fork down here that's going to, again, it's going to pull. It actually works in this direction. I know it doesn't look like it will, but just the way it's configured. 70, 71, same, same thing. I had a 71. It was the same screwed up system. They only did this in 70 and 71. So they give you these uh, little windows so you can view down in here and you can manipulate and you can turn and you can rotate the tangs on the throw out bearing. Rotate them so the clutch fork gets behind them and then you're locked in. She's ready to be pulled on to disengage and engage. Disengage, engage. Yeah, so we're ready to go back in. We need to get the fuel lines done and um, uh, get our electrics, get our batteries. And uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm giving myself to the end of the month. I think we're on, I don't know, what, what's today? The seventh? I think we're looking pretty good. Okay, up under the car here, working in the fuel pump area. So what we did was just um, blew the lines out and once we turn, we're gonna call this one supply right now by looking at the diagram. I think I'm, I think I'm accurate, but we blew both lines out, cleaned them, cleared them, and then we correlated and made sure we were, um, same thing on the back end, back by the fuel console. One of them is uh, supply, one of them is return. That's air conditioning. We're gonna, if we do get the air working back on this car, we're gonna replace all the lines. I just haven't cleared all the, we'll leave the brackets, we'll leave the factory brackets. Uh, but um, we're gonna use, I hope, be able to use the factory connector, not cut it off, just come in and, you know, do the little with the Walmart connectors. And these are the kind I think you just, you know, put a little heat on it and they kind of shrink up. Uh, and our bracket, when our mounting in our, these are soft, these are nice here, so that'll work. Our fuel pump will bolt right there. But that's work we were doing today, but we have to stop because our fuel line was six millimeter, not seven millimeter. And I think the, I think the uh, diameter on this is supposed to be seven. And I tell you what, guys, I, you know, I'm looking at these and these are, these are closer to eight. So I'm going to mic these and, um, you know, I, I know it has to be tight going on and, you know, then you put your clamp and everything, but I'm going to mic these one more time. The book called for seven millimeter. Um, but I, I'm, I'm thinking these are closer to eight. I don't know if S's and E's had eight millimeter fuel lines, but, uh, you know, the five fit fine on the spray and pray system, but uh, yeah, these are a little, little big. All right, so we're gonna start running fuel lines. Um, I've been told on the fuel line diagram, the one that actually came from Porsche, the one that actually came from their factory workshop manuals is wrong and you're not supposed to follow it. So on this fuel console, you have, uh, you have two supply lines coming in from the tank. One is actually return, I correct myself. After it goes to the fuel console, this is directly the, uh, the, the filter main supply that goes to the pump. The pump has two barbs on it. And we still have three barbs up top here. Plus we've got the, uh, I don't know if you guys can see up here. We've got the cold start injector, the spray and pray, which is five millimeter. All this other stuff is seven millimeter. So we're gonna start running our fuel lines. Um, that's next. Um, we're not going to use that factory Porsche pump. We're going to uh, probably do the, um, uh, I forgot the name of the pump, starts with the P. Apologize about that. This little guy here um, had to do it twice. Um, if, if, if that, I, I pulled everything off, pulled the clutch off, checked the clutch, make sure the clutch spline was correct for the tranny. Everything's good. Um, I would just must have been off just a millimeter. Um, now remember, on these, um, throw out bearings. This throw out bearing does not push. This throw out bearing pulls. So you have to line up the, the, the clutch fork, which is going to pull. Yes, not push. It's going to pull. So you want to make sure your, um, uh, your turn or, you know, you clock in. So your clutch fork can actually clear as you're putting the transaxle transmission on. And, uh, yeah. So after I pull it off, check the splines on the clutch, they're good. Held the alignment tool on there real good before I <laughs> torqued up the um, uh, pressure plate to 16 pounds today. 16 
foot pounds on the uh, pressure plate. Um, I knew I was on the money. I knew my splines were right for my clutch. I knew everything was good. She went right on. So I must not have been lined up as good as I thought I was yesterday. Um, but remember, after you install, you've got to uh, take your um, throw out bearing and you've got to lock it in. So your clutch fork down here that's going to, again, it's going to pull. It actually works in this direction. I know it doesn't look like it will, but just the way it's configured on 70, 71, same, same thing. I had a 71, it was the same screwed up system. They only did this in 70 and 71. So they give you these uh, little windows so you can view down in here and you can manipulate and you can turn and you can rotate the tangs on the throw out bearing rotate them so the clutch fork gets behind them and then you're locked in. She's ready to be pulled on to disengage and engage. Disengage, engage. Yeah, so we're ready to go back in. We need to get the fuel lines done and um, uh, get our electrics, get our batteries. And uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm giving myself to the end of the month. I think we're on, I don't know, what, what's today? The seventh? I think we're looking pretty good. Okay, so right now we're just waiting on some parts. Um, they get the generator installed today. <coughs> generator slash alternator slash the thing that makes the, you know, sparkles, the energy making happener thing. Uh, those aren't factory shim packs. So I'm gonna get the, I think I do have the right wrench. I need to go check my uh, tool kit, but um, I'm gonna get the uh, correct shims. Remember you always gotta install six. Doesn't matter if it's four and two, three and three, one and five. Six of the factory shims have always got to be on the uh, um, on the pulley uh, behind that nut uh, in some sequence or some order so you don't bottom the nut out. So I do have shims, but they didn't look like factory shims. So that's one thing we're going to replace, but we can do that after we start the car or fire the car up. I saw some for like a 22 bucks on eBay or something like that. Anyway, um, waiting on um, cap rotor. Um, what else we're waiting on? Oh, waiting on fuel line. It'd be a lot easier to run the fuel line, put the fuel lines in without having the motor stabbed in. Also, I got told I was 12 days out on a fuel pump. So cancel that order. I'm going to go with another guy who's, uh, you know, in the United States. And um, hopefully we get the Pierberg. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Pieberg, Pierberg. German pump, eight millimeter fittings, one bar of pressure. That's what we're going to go with. That's what we're going to start with. And uh, yeah, get this thing fired, hopefully before the end of the month. I always like to take video to make sure that I'm getting everything put back the way it was taken apart. Make sure I get my things all tied. I don't know if you guys working on old cars wake up at night and say, now did I tighten that before I put all that back together? Sometimes it happens, just, just saying. Okay, here's what we got going today. Just got our alternator back. We had to rebuild, uh, upgraded the rectifier, uh, put out a higher amperage. I think these were rated around 50, 55 from factory. Uh, we just tested this one. This one's around 80 amps, um, which should be okay because we need a 10 gauge wire, which is the charge wire. Comes into contact here with the wire that goes up to your battery, that direction, hanging down right there. Um, so yeah, going to have a little bit of extra amperage. Um, I am not sure about that little guy right there, which is the voltage regulator. It doesn't appear to be corroded from the external, but I may have to have that tested as well. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be fun. Going to be installing and putting our alternator in today. And hopefully, with any luck, um, I got the... Um, uh, reflectors and I need to dress these up a little bit I got reflectors but these look like they could use some cleaning and uh, we'll be putting those on today as well so all in all pretty smooth day we're what is this 9-11 September 11th so it's been a pretty sad somber day but good day for staffing a motor in I uh, got slowed down a little bit because I looked at a photograph that evidently it appeared to me that I hadn't tightened um, the primary nut or bolt that holds on the, um, 
the 10 gauge cable that goes on the back of the alternator. I'd had a comparison photo just to make sure I got all my uh, wires in the correct place when I installed the alternator after the rebuild. And I was looking at it closely and I didn't see any threat. So I was assuming, mm, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's not tight. That's not on there tight. But what I had done, I'd put a, um, a lock washer on there. So that's why there weren't any threads. So yeah, so that took a little time to do that. But um, uh, stabbing this in went pretty smooth, fairly smooth for my uh, old Harbor Freight equipment. That jack was really fighting me. Um, yeah, I need, a, I need a new jack. That's all there is to it. So anyway, I got all the fuel lines um, done. Going to get the new fuel lines all uh, hooked up and uh, all the fuel lines blown out. And uh, let's see, what else? Oh, the fun begins. Uh, we're waiting on shims or a shim pack. Uh, I think I told you six, it's actually five, I believe. Uh, but this did not have a proper shim pack, so I didn't want to put it back on. Um, yep, we've got a cap and rotor that we're ordering as well. Um, just a couple other things want to, you know, address the wiring and a lot of stuff to do underneath guys. You gotta, you know, that, that's 7071 clutch cable. That, that's, uh, that's, that's about a half a day right there getting that all, um, uh, whatever you want to call it, hooked up and, um, uh, adjusted. But, um, that's, that's where we're at right now. Um, still on pace, I hope, um, gotta, gotta check all of our wiring, especially on the rebuilt CDI box. Um, hook up all the electronics and um, goal is, is to get this thing fired and running by the end of September and uh, today's September 11th so we'll keep chopping okay hey sorry I didn't uh, actually film everything that happened uh, yesterday a lot of things actually been happening but um, finally got a, a, a friend of mine um, really good with these cars really good with whole electrical systems and has worked his way around uh, a few of these MFI units and we worked and we worked and we worked and we got the uh, we got the Pierberg pump um, going making one bar of pressure and we had everything everything all dialed in but here's the fact of the matter we never could get the pump that sat guys it's it sat for over 40 years okay we never could get the pump to prime we couldn't get any of the metal lines um, so at this juncture I'm um, going to pack it all up. I'm going to put it in nice storage boxes and I am going to, I've had these on the shelf for a while too. So, um, we're going to go with these, um, 40, these Weber 40 IDAs, uh, get some idle jets in here, uh, throw some kits in, boil them out, blow out all the passages and get some new springs, return springs, um, linkages, breathers, the whole deal. But these have been on the shelf way too long, so they need to be boiled out, gone through, and kits put in those. And um, got the uh, uh, intakes from Pelican ordered. You know, all the stuff. So um, what's going to happen to the factory MFI? It's going to go all together and, and sleep in a little box until someone at a future date. But uh, I'm going to pull all the MFI stuff off is what I'm trying to say. And uh, we're going with Weber carbs. That's, that's a story. The car did fire up. Uh, we could... Uh, pour a little fuel down the velocity stacks and keep it here and uh, let, it, let it idle. Sounded good. Um, really, you know, impressed with the uh, uh, the rebuild on the CDI box that Bob Ashlock out in California did. Uh, finally got that all dialed in. It finally got a trigger signal going over to it. So that, that was all great. But uh, for a car that, and I, you know, I wouldn't at any time yesterday, I wasn't thinking about doing any filming. So um, it was running yesterday, but it was running off the bottle, so that's where we're at. Okay, so let's take off an MFI and box it up real nice and neat.